What's up everybody, it's Kedrin, and today I'm going to bring you a quick little tutorial on how to do procedural foliage generation in your worlds. So as you can see, I have a bunch of grass, some trees, um, some bushes, and even some little logs and stuff. All of this is done procedurally using a three or four different generators and just copy and pasting the actual generator on the map itself so that they, they lay within the same bounds. Um, but I'm going to show you guys exactly how to do this and get it all set up for you. So let's go. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to have to do in order to turn on procedural generation is you're going to have to come up here to edit and you're going to go to your editor preferences. And what you're going to do is you're going to type in procedural and then click procedural foliage and make sure that it's turned on. So after you have it turned on, you can go ahead and come up here and you can come down to volumes and type in procedural foliage volume and foliage blocking volume will pop up. The blocking volume is what I have right here on this little square and this smaller square over here that just blocks it out of the actual map itself. And then the foliage volume itself I have over here on the right side if you look, I have, I have one for my bushes, I have one for my grass, and I have one for my trees. All I did was once I set one up, I just copy and pasted two more and then changed the actual spawner down here on the foliage spawner to my individual spawner. So I have spawners set up for my bushes and my limbs and all that stuff. And then I have my grass and my tree spawner as well. So in order to actually make the spawners, you'll just right click, you come up here to foliage, and after you've turned procedural foliage on, you should be able to create your procedural foliage spawner. And all of these are static mesh foliages, uh, so you can create those as well. In the actual spawner, you'll see that it has a random seed, tile size, number of unique tiles, and the minimum quad tree size. And then when you make a brand new one, it won't have any array elements added, but you can just click this little plus and add as many arrays as you would like. But a quick little tip is if you want to remove any or if you add too many, you're going to have to come up here and click remove all elements. It'll clear everything because there really is no way of deleting individual pieces. You can right click it, but you can't delete it. So just be warned. But for each of your individual foliage types, you're going to want to create your own foliage type and store them wherever you want. But you can come in here and choose the mesh for whichever tree or foliage grass you want. You can choose rocks, you can choose limbs, you can choose whatever you want. And then you can come down here and choose the parameters for how you want it to spawn. We're not going to worry about anything on the placement right now. The main thing that we're going to worry about is the actual procedural tab. So for each individual foliage type that you have, you may want to choose different spawn rates or number of steps and seeds and stuff like that. So I'm going to give you guys a brief little rundown on what all of this means. I don't know exactly everything myself. I'm still figuring it out. But from what I know, collision radius is the radius around where the mesh is spawned. The shade radius is the radius on where the shade is, so how far away a tree will spawn based on whether or not it can spawn in the shade. So the number of steps and the seeds per step is how many times it will replicate down the tree of age, if I'm not wrong. So if you have one step and it spawns two seeds per step, then it'll spawn the initial tree and then two more smaller trees. But if you have three steps, then it will spawn three big trees and then two smaller trees for each tree, based on the amount of steps. I'm not 100% sure what the initial seed density is. The average spread distance is how far the seeds will spread from one another in a radius around the original spawn point. And then the spread variance is how much they can spread in randomness around. So if it's 200 and 333. And then down here in the growth tab, you can specify whether or not you want your plants or foliage to grow in the shade. If it's rocks, you can make it grow in the shade, but if it's like certain plants that you don't want growing under trees, then you can specify that here. So as it spawns from the biggest tree, or I guess the oldest tree to the youngest tree, you can choose what you want the age for the oldest tree to be and the youngest, and it will spawn trees in a random order based on the age as it goes down the seed line. And then the procedural scale, this is where you can choose the scale for your meshes. So for me, I have 0.75 to 3 because this is for trees, so I want them to be a little bit bigger. 
You can also choose the scale curve on how you want them to scale based on size. One really big important thing is if you are doing trees and you want them to be, or if you want them to have collision, but if you're also spawning grass and you don't want the grass to have collision, make sure you come into your foliage types for your trees and then come down to the collision preset and make sure they're set to block all dynamics so that the trees are actually spawned with collision. And then you can set the grass to whatever you want. If you don't want it to have collision, which I recommend, you can just turn it off. Another thing, if you are generating on a much larger map and you don't want a lot of lag and you don't want everything to be spawned in at once, you can set the cold distance for each individual mesh uh, to whatever you want. I recommend setting it somewhere above 50,000 if you're on a larger map, just so that way, uh, you know, everything just doesn't cut in and out. But now, after you have your spawner set up, all you have to do is you go into your world and you find whichever procedural foliage generator you're going to use for whichever type you want. You scroll down until you find your procedural foliage spawner and you choose which type of spawner you want to use. Then, as you can see, some of these, you can kind of see where the tiles are laid out. Um, and if you choose to change the tile overlap, you can make it less noticeable from a global or like an aerial perspective, I guess. Um, but on the ground, it's, it's less noticeable. Now over here, you can also choose whether or not you want your foliage to be place, placeable on static meshes, on foliage, other foliage, stuff like that. Um, but you can specify exactly what you want over here. And then once you're done with that, you can just click resimulate. And every single time you change something within the spawner itself or one of the foliage types, you're going to have to click resimulate again. Um, and then you just click resimulate and it should simulate within the bounds. If you have any blocking volumes like I do, you're going to want to come up here and scroll up and where it says procedural foliage volume, you're going to want to actually choose which layer you want it to block out. So for me, I have the bushes and the trees blocked out, but not the grass. So I had to come in here and click on the actual bushes and then go back to my spawner, hit resimulate, and then, you know, come back up here, change it to trees, and then go back to the tree spawner and hit resimulate just to make sure. Because it doesn't do all of them at once, you have to choose them individually. So just make sure you're aware of that. So the cool thing is, so if you don't want to clutter one spawner too much, so you can see I have four trees over here on this one, and then for my grass, I have four different kinds of grass. And then for my bushes, I just have the bush and the two tree limbs. And this is just to avoid cluttering them all onto one spawner, um, because it will try to replace other assets, or like it'll some of them will have certain priorities over other ones. And if you want them to just be on different layers so that you can change them, as you wish and not have to change them all within one you just go ahead and make multiple different kinds of spawners and overlay them on top of each other and you could make smaller ones for little sections where you wanted uh maybe some flowers to grow so like if i wanted to place one right over here in this area where it's really light and make like a flower field then i can do that as well and just make a spawner specifically for those flowers yeah, it's pretty quick, it's pretty simple, and uh, now you guys can go out and create procedurally generated pretty much anything you want. As long as you make a foliage type and choose the mesh and go through all the customization and get it exactly fit to how you want it. Uh, so yeah, I hope this helped you guys generate some forests or some, uh, some cool maps that you guys uh, have really been wanting to make and didn't want to go through the trouble of placing all of your, your foliage by hand or painting it on the mesh through the foliage painter. Uh, so yeah, I hope this helped you guys, and if it did, go ahead and drop me a like, leave me a comment, and uh, I'll catch you guys later. Kettering out.